Let's take a look at configuring Secure Shell on our Linux clients. Now SSH, as it's installed, will meet most of your needs because it's configured to standards. However, you can also configure it to suit particular needs you have on your network, such as changing the port that the network protocol uses and so forth, and also changing authentication and user options. Now SSH is configured in Linux like most other services are, through text-based configuration files. Now these can be a little hairy to get to and to configure if you don't know what you're doing, but they're easy to look at and easy actually to edit with any text editor. Now to start the SSH service, if it's not started automatically when the computer boots up, you just go to your prompt, and in this case I have the prompt for Computer A listed, and just type in Service SSHD Start. That starts the SSH service. Now if you want to configure the service itself, there's a file you need to edit. And again, any text editor will do. And that's in slash Etsy slash SSH slash SSHD underscore config. That file will edit the service itself. Now there's a client configuration also, and it looks similar to the other configuration file for the service, but notice the absence of the D. To configure the client, you simply edit the slash Etsy slash SSH slash SSH underscore config file. Again, notice the difference between those two files. There's no D in the client configuration file. Now, of course, if you're not the command line junkie that a lot of us are, there are GUI applications and front ends that are also available that you can use instead of the command line. So you don't really have to learn those command line things and how to edit those files. There are some GUIs out there, and I'm going to demonstrate one to you shortly as well. For now, let's go ahead and do a demonstration on viewing the SSH configuration files, just so you can kind of see what they look like. We're not going to actually edit them. We're just going to give you an idea of what they look like and what they have in them. Okay, we're in our OpenSUSE 11 box. We're in Computer A, as a matter of fact. Let's go ahead and open up a terminal, and we're going to look at a couple of these configuration files that we have. Let's just go ahead and cat these files, and basically using cat we can look at them. We're going to look at slash Etsy, slash SSH, slash SSHD, underscore config, first. And if you remember correctly, that is the configuration file for the service itself. So we're going to go ahead and look at that file, and there's a lot of things in there, but actually it's not too hard to read it. There's some preliminary information up front, and notice that it's a text file, and everything is basic, just text. That's all you do is edit the particular values in some of these headings and so forth. Now, if it's a comment or if it's not used, it's uh, preceded by a hash mark, as you can see right there. So a lot of this information right here is preceded by hash marks, and you've got some information down here that's not active because it's preceded by the hash mark, so it's actually not in use. If you actually go down a little bit, the first thing that you see that's actually active is protocol 2. And what that does is make sure that you have the protocol 2 version of SSH running versus the unsecure protocol version 1. And there's some other interesting things down through here that you can edit as well. Logging, uh, authentication uh, information and so forth, just a lot of different things. My recommendation is that unless you know what you're doing, unless you have a particular need to edit this file, I wouldn't. Because like I said, by and large, SSH is configured to be what you want right out of the box. Unless you've got some strange and interesting configuration options on your network that you want, such as a different port number and so forth, you probably don't ever need to edit this. But just in case you do, I'm just giving you an idea of what different options you can have. There's a lot of security options in here. There's a lot of networking options in here as well. Most of the options for the client settings, however, are in a different configuration file. They are actually in the client configuration file, slash Etsy, slash SSH, slash SSH underscore config. Again, notice that there's no D in there with the SSH there. That will give you the client configuration file itself. And there's a lot in there. And what we want to look at specifically is that there's uh, some preliminary information that explains how everything works. 
and it tells you how the data is parsed of course first thing we see is the host that's not commented out and that's because it, you can use SSH client from any host by default and you can put particular hosts in there if you like to limit that there's different settings in here again mostly security and networking options and a lot of those are commented out notice that protocol 2 is not so we're using protocol 2 the different encryption methods you can use are in there the different authentication methods that you can use so there's a lot to this file as well and again I would caution you that unless you really need to play with it I wouldn't bother with it now for all of you folks out there who don't like command line stuff we've got some SSH GUI configuration tools if you remember earlier during this course uh, I downloaded and installed a SSHD configuration tool to configure the SSH service and we didn't start that up but I'm going to go ahead and show that to you now and you can see that it's a very nice GUI tool that you can use uh, in this case in OpenSUSE under YAST so we've got some generic settings that we can uh, use here we can change the port of course we can change some of the server features such as allow TCP forwarding x11 forwarding so we can forward our x11 displays across uh, SSH and we'll cover that a little bit more later compression and so forth we can also look at the login settings uh, permit message of the day after login permit root login and that's a setting that we'll look at very closely when we talk about securing SSH we can also change our authentication settings such as password authentication RSA authentication and public key authentication and we can change the number of times that a person can try to log in with SSH before it fails such as if they put in a wrong password we can also look at protocols and ciphers and talk about which versions of the SSH protocol we should be using two only two and one or one only we can also look at the supported ciphers that's used or authentication encryption methods rather that's used in SSH so actually this way is a little bit easier to manage and it's probably what a lot of you will do if you're not comfortable with the command line so that's essentially all there is to configuring SSH on a Linux box there's not much to it and again let me emphasize by and large a lot of these settings you don't ever need to play with because SSH works for you uh, with other SSH implementations right out of the box